Hello everybody and welcome to this video tutorial how to model this jewelry ring that features a twisted self-intersecting geometry and beautifully crafted surface transitions and clean faces. In this exercise I will show you how I started blocking out all the needed sketches. Then based on those developed my individual variations and then came up with the final nice design. This file is shared with you so please go ahead and download it so you can better study it. As always these sessions are really filled with a lot of very smart modeling techniques and with all that said let's get started. Let's start with the sketches first. I know that in this design the ring will have at the bottom and at the top a small area and then to the sides it will get wider and then more narrow again until it passes in there. So you see I'm actually selecting right now the plotting path for the loft. Okay, now when we design these sketches we want to be able to do this really fast and easy. And let me show you how I start this. It's actually quite simple. So again, our starting block is at the bottom. The ring diameter is nine millimeters. So I can draw a line down that is for the radius. And then I have 2.5 and 1.5. So I specify everything so it's nice and clean. Then I can draw here a line. There we are. Just make it a little bit bigger. Double tap everything horizontal and then this 1.5 and 2.5 or whatever dimension you would like to have. And when we zoom in here, there, this midpoint to there, I would like to connect. So I will actually delete, for example, these constraints here. So I can pull this point now onto that midpoint. Very nice. Now I will make this horizontal, vertical and nine millimeters. And you see how this way I pulled that rectangle into the correct position. Now that was pretty easy. Okay. To build now the sketch on top, well, it's pretty easy. Now we simply select the sketch or the profile part we only need and then just rotate it up 180 degrees there simple okay then you see here we have these two and there's one in between let me show you how we can do this so again I will select this rectangle there we are and the next step will be 45 degrees. There we are. Okay. But I would like this now to be to the left and the right. So I need to make a copy. The easiest way is now we tap onto the sketch with a finger double tap. So we move the grid right onto it. There we are. To help myself here, I can draw a line to visualize where I am. Double tap. And then I can bring it over and position everything the way how I would like this to be. To bring this over to the other side now, with this object still selected, so the elements of that sketch, we go to mirror, select this line as the mirror plane, and there we are. Perfect. You see? Super easy. To get the same now over to the other side, I can go to transform, mirror, select these two, select this plane, and there we are. And even on top, we have the same. Suck, suck, and you and you. This is our construction plane. I will go to the top view and tap on the grid. You see then this way we can use the grid. 
we have to specify this as an object to mirror. There we are. Very nice. Cool. So you see, this is actually pretty simple. And then with the next, all we need to do is again, we will rotate this another 45 degrees. Very good. And let's go over to the other side. This is actually not the correct value. There we are. Very good. So I have here this and this at the same time. If we take a look at the side, here you see they are nicely offset. I would like to show you something now. And this will understand you more how to move them than left and right. Let's go to loft. We select all our individual profiles here. Then there's the twist. And here it goes back. Cool. So it's a loop that works. Let me take a look from the top. But we can really see here along there, it makes a nice bend, but then there it gets kind of linear. So that means these profiles left and right have to be further away from those two. And really easy. We can also in this view model them, bring them over so we can eyeball it. But ideally we want to be precise. What about we do this with two millimeters? Ah, that is too much. One millimeter, okay. Double tap, minus one, because the arrow goes to the right side. That's then the direction. Double tap, one, double tap, minus one. Okay, so now let's do the loft again. And there we are. Very nice. Sweet. Then there you see actually how well this works out. Now we have the one side. We can do the loft for the other side too. Or we can also, at this point, let's do a mirror and see how this works. But uh, yeah, I did actually a little mistake. I'm, I did a mirror across the other uh, direction. I would like to have a mirror along here, this line there. Very good. So now if I take a look from the top or from the front, I can observe how this works. This works really good. I would like, however, to have one ring here where I'm tapping to be a little bit taller. Okay, so what we can do, I will hide this and make this taller as needed. Okay, very nice. Then now I need to start the same tools, loft, and I simply follow the same path. Be careful tapping only onto faces or sketch profiles, not the edges. And there we are. Cool. We now show the other one. There it is. And there we can see how far, for example, the object blends over. So the center is pretty good. And then to the side, it gets very uniform again. If this is not enough, okay, then we also here have to move these up a little bit. To do this quite easily, I will do the following. I will select all, horizontal, constraint, select this one, lock, select this one, and then say two. Let's measure this. This is 2.1. Okay, maybe make this 1.9. So there's a little bit of a bigger noticeable difference. And then now we have to do the same on 
the opposite to log 1.9. Okay, so I modified the left and right element. So that means if I now do a loft, there we are, I go through the right side. And you see, simply by manipulating these cross sections, we get already very interesting blends. So there we have this form, very nice. And I will hide it and then create the loft that flows through the opposite side. But actually, I have to modify this and bring this back to the original part. Very good. Okay. Loft. And there is the end. Good. Let's take a look. Yeah. And there, if you now go to the site, you can clearly see there is much more of a transition. Everything looks actually pretty good, but if we zoom in here, then we can see, oh, there are tiny issues. And we would like to blend everything well together. So with the final result, then we have this beautiful transition. So now basically I can show you how we can get to there. We will do the following. I will select one ring here and make this quite bigger or to the inside. And then I select this and make this also bigger. Okay, good. You might ask yourself why? Well, the reason for that is quite simple. I will for a moment show actually here this sketch because here I have a line along this line now I can create a construction plane and I will use through edge at an angle 90 degrees very good perfect so on this plane, I can now plot down a sketch. And here is my circle. If I now show you the ring geometry, there you see where we are. And this should be nine millimeters. So you see how this is actually bigger. So this ring will, or this circle will be used after the two rings we created are fused together to drill out the inside. Think about it like, yeah, like a drill or a cone with sandpaper on it. And then we clean this up. So that worked out well. How do we then, however, how can we do the outside ideally? I really like the way how everything looks but I need to trim everything a little bit. Because also here, when we fuse this together, there you see there are some problematic surfaces. So we could assume, okay, uh, we can make this maybe a tick bigger. Let's say by 0.2 and then there you see how this perfectly blends. But then where this surface originally was, I also need to have a projection again. Okay, so I will undo this, um, this offset. And now I will select this edge, select this plane and go to project done. And this projected in this profile, you see, 
Beautiful. Okay, so this is actually now my outer profile. Really good. So that means this surface, I can extend a little bit. This will later trim it. And also this one here, I will just in a minimal way extend just a notch, not too much. It's kind of like enough to have extra material to send paper it away. Very good. So now here comes the interesting trick. We select these two, make a union, keep originals on. Thank you. So there's the final piece. There you see how we have everything built bigger. To show easier what we're doing, I will actually extrude this one out and then move this back. Everything inside this ring I would like to see. Okay, so there we can see right there this 0.1 over um, extension is um, pretty good. Here it starts to intersect and go in uh, and the other ring is much bigger there. Okay, very good. So let's go ahead and say U and U intersect. Now when we rotate everything around, let's turn off the sketch. Look at there. There are no edges, no edges on these faces. We will have logically here an edge that is where um, previously the sketch actually started to cut it a little bit uh, so that's normal this is however no problem we simply round this as far as we can 10 let's see 10 is good and let's do the same here there we are very nice so let's continue here we have a nice edge and really clean geometry. So 10, yeah, that makes it really beautiful here too. This is a really nice transition. Let's see, can we push this even further? So 20, yeah, we make this really nice and wide. Same here, okay. We have very sharp corners here. Uh, 0.5, maybe. We can adjust everything later up afterwards. That's the beauty of direct modeling and shaper. Maybe zoom in more so we can easier tap the edge. There we are. And we set 0.5, there we are. We also have the same here. So before I continue doing this, I would like to, we need to, we need to think about how are we now plotting everything? So I will select this edge and say 0.2 and look at everything that got rounded. So from here, it went down over there and came back and then looped here and went to there. Beautiful. No additional repairs, no additional tricks that need to be done. It works flawless. Okay, so here this is rounded and this corner is rounded. So now this edge I can round 0.2. Does this work? I'm getting actually a little bit too tight there. I don't like this. So I will go with 0.1. Then I will do the same here. 0.1 and now since these corner points are rounded I can go ahead and say you and you you and you 0.2 there we are this is the the area where it goes over the finger let's see if we can increase this to make this more comfortable 
this is not an edge that is exposed visually. This is more for comfort level. And yeah, there we are. Perfect. So this is the process how you uh, create this ring out of raw elements and then we extend the surfaces so we get perfect clean surfaces without any here again let me show you show you this without seeing any of these intersections and then we trim it fillet it and we have perfect loops and that's it